Hey everyone, hope you're all doing it very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a battery pack and going through a performance evaluation of that specific pack. Now the pack that we have here today is very different than all the others that we've had here on the channel. In the sense of we are going to be using a different voltage and a different type of battery. So this is actually one of the most popular form factors, a 3S battery pack at 2200 milliamp hour. This type of battery pack operates a couple radio control boats, a couple radio control cars, but it does fit in many of the ready to fly radio controlled airplanes. It's absolutely the most popular battery pack for that area of the RC hobby. Now because of this, we're gonna to have to do things a little bit different when it comes to the performance evaluations that we go through for this specific battery pack. We're gonna drop the current down to around the 65 amp mark so that we can properly test this. And I'm gonna go through those details when we're looking at the actual evaluation. Now before we get into it, I do have to thank all the Patreon supporters for your contribution to help make videos like these possible. Now if you wanna become a member of the RC Explained Patreon community, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. Depending on which tier you sign up for, it will give you access to different spreadsheets. Now, of course, if you sign up for tier two, you're gonna have access to both sheets, which ultimately includes the battery performance metrics that we have measured since we started doing these tests. Keep in mind, this is the first time we're doing a 2200 milliamp hour test. So with that being said, let's talk about exactly how we're gonna go through this. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this battery pack and the other battery pack. We always do these in sets of two where possible unless cost becomes an issue or concern and we're going to go and charge up this battery. With that being said, let's jump right into it and talk about how we're actually going to go and measure performance of this battery. We do it in two different ways. We first look at a theoretical C rating for the battery pack and then we ultimately measure the performance that we get out of the battery pack using a live load and we load up the battery pack and we watch how hot this battery gets under that specific load. The first thing that we're going to do here is measure the internal resistance and we do that by getting the battery pack on a charger. We're going to charge it at a 1.5 C rate and then from there what we're going to do is take the internal resistance measurement of this battery pack and get all of the cells and then average them and then we're going to do the exact same thing from battery one to battery pack two. We're going to charge that at the 1.5 C rate. We're going to get the internal resistance measurements there at the one minute mark and then we're going to take the average of all six cells that we've now charged. Now that we have the internal resistance measurement for this battery, we can go ahead and place this information into the RC Explained RC Calc Sheet and get what the predicted C rating for this specific pack is going to be. Let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, here is the spreadsheet. And of course, this is the release for March. We're already working on the release for March. I'm gonna go and jump right to it. We're gonna go to the lithium polymer calculator sheet. So this is the calculator sheet that has a ton of information. We're gonna only be using a certain section of it. And that is these two boxes here. We have to fill these in and then it'll give us the information that we are predicting based off of this internal resistance. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is update the capacity of the pack we know the capacity is 2200 milliamp hour we're going to go and throw in 2200 milliamp hour and then we're going to go and place the average cell resistance here which worked out to 4.3 as we just calculated from the other section of the video that you just watched so 4.3 is what we place in that cell and then we get the output of what this is calculating and of course this is purely based off of all of the internal resistance values that we just achieved so the battery packs calculate calculated real C rating based off of that IR works out to be 25.7 and this would give you a maximum continuous current of about 57 amps. And that's actually a pretty decent value and based off of the performance of this pack, we might even be able to beat that maximum continuous rating here. And we're gonna see that as we load the battery pack at around that 65 amp mark. Excellent, now that we know our internal resistance and we have our estimated C rating, use the internal resistance of our battery pack, we can go ahead and place this battery on a load cell and then we're gonna get the performance data. And we can go through all of the results here right now. Let's go ahead and do that. 
that. All right, guys, here it is. I'm gonna have to go through this and break it down because this is very different than what we've done before. This is the very first battery pack, as we mentioned before, that has a smaller capacity. And because it has a smaller capacity, it's not gonna be able to handle the typical load that we place on it. And if we do place a significant load on it, it's just simply not safe. I know that it's gonna run into thermal issues trying to withstand that. We just went through a calculation which tends to be quite accurate. We should expect that its maximum is somewhere around that point. Let's get started and take a look at how we're gonna actually deal with this. So first of all, what we have to point out is that we're looking at capacities of 2200 versus our example here of 5200. And generally, we are doing a 105 amp load test. However, as we mentioned, because of the difference there in capacity, we're gonna go and correspond this to loads on the battery pack, such as a C rating based load. So all we need to do is take a look at our capacities and take a look what kind of amperage that we're actually pulling from it. We can do some division and then we're gonna get the C rate type load from it. So this is gonna actually tell you how significantly we are loading each battery pack. For example, let's start off with the 5200 milliamp hour pack. This 5200 milliamp hour pack is going to be loaded at 105 amps. We've already done this test at about the 20 C. That's what that load is gonna feel like for that battery pack, a 20 C load. That's 20 times the actual capacity and amp hour of the pack. However, for our 2200 milliamp hour battery pack, a 65 amp load is actually gonna be a load of 29 and a half C, pretty much 30 C load. This is significantly more load than the 5200 milliamp hour pack. So we're really pushing this smaller pack. So when we get into some of the other specifications of this battery pack, it is a 45 C rated pack and it's got 2200 milliamp hour capacity. So now what we want to do is take a look at the actual capacity that we're able to draw out of this based off of our conditions and the load that we're applying. So the first value that we typically go through in these battery tests is the total milliamp hour that we can actually extract from our battery pack before it hits a low voltage cutoff of around that 3.3 volts per cell mark. So the first battery pack here, looking at our 2200 milliamp hour, got out 2051. That is actually really, really good considering the battery is only 2200 milliamp hour total and you should never expect to get 2200 milliamps out of the pack when you're loading it up at quite a significant margin. So this is an excellent result. As you can see, when we did the same thing for the Z battery pack here, we got out of that 5200 milliamp hour battery, only loading it at 20 C load, we got 774 milliamp hour and it hit that voltage cutoff. So the Turnigy Graphene being this size actually does really well in comparison. The milliamp hour that we get out of it to 3.5 volts was 205 and the Z battery packs was 46. And the time to 3.5 volts was 10.8 versus 1.85. And now we're looking at the exact same data for 3.60 volts. And the milliamp hour that we got until we hit that mark was 92 and a half for the Turnigy Graphene and 7.3 for the Z battery pack. Looking at the time, we got the graphene going to 4.85 seconds until it hit that voltage mark. And then the Z battery pack got to just under half a volt. And if we look at the voltage that we were able to measure at that 10 second mark, it was 3.5 versus 3.4. So we could see that when the 2200 milliamp hour graphene battery pack was loaded at 29C, it could actually hold and maintain 3.5 volts versus the Z battery pack loaded at only 20C withstood 3.4 volts at that 10 second mark. And then we look at the energy per cell measured in watt minutes and it is at the 105 amp load for the Z battery pack and 65 amps for the Turnigy. We're looking at 420 watt minutes versus 156 watt minutes. And then we look at the very last column here, average cell wattage. We're gonna see a very big difference because of the 105 versus 65 amp loads. We get 216 out of the Turnigy versus 311 
watts out of the Z. Then when we take a look at what the graph looks like, you can see how the voltage starts up high and right away sags down quite low. However, the current actually was in excess of 70 amps during this test and actually settled around the 65 mark here. And then anywhere past this, it started to dip below. And then at the very end, it was actually under that 60 amp mark going by our axes on the left until the voltage cutoff actually hit in at this mark. And if you look at the bottom, this is the seconds. This is the time duration here. And we can see how long this test was actually going on for until we hit that voltage cutoff mark. And the temperature of the battery pack, when we ended up looking at that, this is all data that goes into the spreadsheet that's downloadable on the Patreon site. It was somewhere around that 52 to 54 degrees Celsius mark. So it still had a little bit more room. We do cut the test off at 58 degrees Celsius when a battery pack ends up reaching that point. Well, there you go, guys. This battery pack actually performs better than expected. If you actually compare it to that 5,000 milliamp hour pack, it does quite well for its size. Another thing to point out here is that we did a video quite a while ago and it's using the exact same battery pack model, but of course an older version of the battery pack that came from that time period. And the pack actually performed pretty good as it started the car that I owned at that time period. I would expect that the current that's going through that thing would have been over 100 amps or so, and it handled it no problem for that split amount of time that it takes to start the car up. I'll leave a link in the description below of that specific video. And that pretty much does it for this video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. There's going to be a ton more batteries that we're going to be testing here this year, including some good performing battery packs, as well as the one that has been requested, which is a Spectrum battery pack. We're going to be taking a look at that this year make sure you hit that sub button so you won't miss out on these specific videos that we do monthly until next time thanks a lot for watching guys